All right, you guys, can you hear me? Someone type in the chat, yes. Thank you, Eric Beck. All right, so those of you guys who don't know me, um, my name is Eric, I'm one of the first year fellows. Um, I think this is a really, really exciting topic and it's something that's pertinent no matter what you go into, whether it's endocrinology, rheumatology, general medicine, um, no matter what, you cannot escape EKGs and you may not be able to escape VT. Um, one of the hardest things about VT is deciphering between is it VT or is it not VT? Um, and that's what we're going to try to talk about today. So I'll apologize right now. Um, I am a mother and I reserve the right to have kind of bad mom humor. So um, a couple of things here that you'll see. So hopefully you guys in your quarantine, which are not really quarantined, um, all you cool cats and kittens, we're gonna go ahead and go live on this. And hopefully you're laughing by yourselves from a distance. I can hear you all now and hope you enjoy this. Here we go. So it's 2 a.m. You get called from medicine consult on the transplant service for asymptomatic first. So first question. question, where the hell is a cardiology fellow? Answer, they're sleeping and won't wake up. JK, they're in the cat lab with a STEMI because they're an interventional gunner. Second question, now what? Answer, asymptomatic trisodes is fake news. Artifact for the wind. So if somebody calls you and they say they've been in sustained torsades for minutes um, and they're still talking and having blood pressure, it's most likely artifact. So fun fact, this was a real consult that one of my colleagues got at 2 a.m. So going forward, I'll ask you guys when I want responses and if you can put them into the chat, that would be fantastic. It'll be hopefully as interactive as we possibly can make it. Um, so you guys have probably seen this before. We're gonna focus essentially on the right side of the chart. So I'm gonna do some really basic things because I think with EKGs and cardiology in general, it's really important to go back to the basics and definitions. We're all about definitions in cardiology. So is the cure as complex, narrow or wide? So when you actually talk to attendings, fellows, whoever it may be, and you wanted to find the tachycardia, you really just want to say wide complex tachycardia or narrow complex tachycardia that gives us a pretty good idea of what it could be. You may not know the exact interpretation and that's okay, but wide versus narrow is a very different etiology, prognostication and management. So here we go. So narrow complex, as you guys know, is less than 120 milliseconds um, versus a wide, which is greater than 120, which is how many boxes? Just type it in quickly. And by the way, whoever gets the most answers right and participates the most, I owe you a coffee. So wide QRS, so it's going to be regular, wonderful, 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 regular, irregular, okay? So regular, we're going to focus on a few things, um, an irregular, a couple, but we won't get into the weeds too, too much because really you could talk about a lot of this for a long time. So with regular wide complex tachycardia, you're going to think of monomorphic VT, um, an SVT with aberrant conduction, um, ventricular pacing we will not get into today, but something to be aware of, especially if you're on the CARDS teleservice or CVI. Um, in an irregular standpoint, you're, of course, looking at fib, flutter with variable conduction, some sort of atrial tachycardia with aberrant conduction. Polymorphic VT, of course, will look irregular, as would torsades. They're both kind of a form of polymorphic VT, and we'll uh, differentiate a little bit later. And then, of course, VFib. We're not really going to focus on any of the AVRT, AVNRT accessory pathways. Um, that's another topic for another day. So what's missing, though? Um, I think something that's really important to look at that wasn't in this algorithm, and you're going to need to refer to a baseline EKG, and you're probably going to hear this a lot overnight, where you hear about a patient who the nurse might think is VT, but it actually is not because you're very astute and you look at a prior ECG. So what am I talking about that would be there that would make it look like a wide complex tachycardia? once and twice you can text me too i don't know if you guys can all see the group but if you have my cell you can do that yes bundle branch blocks left and right of course so you're gonna say hey that looks pretty darn familiar i'm gonna go ahead and look at the baseline ecg and lo and behold it looks exactly the same and they're just going a little bit faster because they're agitated in the middle of the night and they have some sinus tachycardia going on with a baseline bundle perfect so wide complex tachycardia what does this mean electrically um, the arrhyth arrhythmia originates outside of the normal conduction system and below the AV node. 
Um, you can have abnormalities with the Hisperkinji system, which would be VT with aberrancy, and then you have pre-excitation um, with an accessory pathway that you get um, direct activation of ventricular myocardium, which we're not really going to focus on as much today. Um, why do we get so excited about wide complex tachycardia? Ventricular arrhythmias account for up to 80% of sudden cardiac death. Really, really important. So, um, lo and behold, if you guys are at the VA, right, and you know the fellows on VA call are maybe 20 minutes away being myself, by the time I get here, if they've been in sustained VT that whole time and you haven't done anything, the patient's in, in deep, you know what. So the problem with ventricular arrhythmias is that the diagnosis can be difficult. And of course, it's something your tired eyes wanna be looking at in the middle of the night, right? Um, even worse, the algorithms to differentiate VT and SVT are complex and somewhat imperfect, right? Nothing in medicine is, is, is perfect, but we have some pretty good algorithms that have great sensitivity and specificity. Um, urgent therapy is often required, so patients may be unstable at the onset of the arrhythmia or deteriorate rapidly, um, particularly if the wide complex tachycardia is VT or SVT at a very rapid rate, right? People do not like heart rates greater than 200 beats per minute, especially if they already have comorbid conditions being reduced DF, lung dysfunction, um, everything that pretty much everyone has at the VA and often you see. So definition, what will we be without them in cardiology? VT is defined as three or more consecutive QRS complexes of ventricular origin at a rate exceeding 100 beats per minute. I know it sounds silly, but here's a fun fact. We often get called for VT when the heart rate is 60. That's a different definition. NSVT versus VT, it's important to define when you call a consultation. If you're calling me and you say, hey, Erica, I got a patient here with VT, it's a difference between me running to the bedside or me saying, oh, you have five beats of NSVT. So please, I know a lot of you, you certainly know this, but maybe just on the phone, um, getting a little lax, just really remember definitions um, and the way we speak in medicine is really, really important because I'm gonna get really excited about about sustained VT. So etiologies of VT, so it's really important. I mean, a lot of our patient population is gonna be older, especially at the VA, um, but the age is gonna give you a big clue as to what it could be. So patients older than 40, you can have a pretty good positive predictive value, which we'll talk about in a minute, that it's gonna be VT. The younger they are, the less likely, and of course there are genetic issues that we won't go into depth about, but that's something to consider significantly as well. So mechanisms of VT, not too much into the weeds, but just touching upon it. So there's re-entrant arrhythmias, which is gonna be the most common. So you need two distinct conduction pathways with a conduction block in one and a region of slow conduction in the other. This is gonna be your most common myocardial scarring. They have a history of an MI in the past. Triggered activity activities when you have a prolonged QT, that essentially reflects prolonged myocyte repolarization due to ion channel malfunction. This prolonged repolarization period leads to early after depolarizations, which can lead to um, torsades. And then another example is digital toxicity. There's also abnormal automaticity, um, which we won't talk about too much, but know that is an etiology as well. So the initial assessment. Y'all best not be calling me if it's 2.30 in the morning. If you have not looked at the patient, please make sure you do that. So step one, leave that workroom, go and see the patient. Um, JK, step two is actually when you get paged, do they have a pulse? I know this sounds silly. I know it sounds intuitive, but in these moments, sometimes it can be scary and you just have to start with the basics. Yes, okay, they do, cool. Get some vitals while I run over. When you do get to the bedside, immediately assess the patient's level of consciousness. Are they alert? Are they drowsy? Are they unresponsive? If alert, let's go to the history and symptoms. So let's start with the talking patient. So um, Sarah's gonna run over. She's uh, at the VA right now. She's got a hemodynamically talking patient. So you're of course going to politely ask that the RN gets an ECG while you're doing this. So what are you gonna look at? History, 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 and age. You do not need a chart review for 30 minutes. Most people will remember whether or not they've had, A, a heart attack, hint, they may have a cabbage scar. B, a history of heart failure, you can do a physical exam. An ICD, look at the chest. A pacemaker, look at the chest. History of AFib, you might not know, old ECG is all you need. Age, so once again, greater than 35, greater than 40, it depends on what um, resource you look at. VT is gonna be more likely than SVT with a positive predictive value of 85%. The less than 35, SVT is gonna be more common. So there you go, one in doubt. Um, family history of sudden cardiac death, however, is really important. So that's something else you can get if they're aware of that. 
So medications, really important. So that's what the rhythm looks like, torsades, which we'll go over later as well. Polymorphic VT and torsades can be really difficult to distinguish at a glance, but what are you going to look at? What differentiates the two? Prolonged QTC, torsades, versus not prolonged could be polymorphic VT. Um, as I kind of just said, so what do you do if it's torsades? Seriously, just shock the patient. Mag, mag, and more mag. I don't know of many patients, at least in my training, who died of too much mag. I'm sure there's some people out there, but um, give mag. So medications, um, of course, you guys know antibiotics, azithro, quinolones, and in today's day and age, bah, 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 hydroxychloroquine, Zofran, 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 methadones. We have plenty of those patients, right? Antipsychotics, of course. This is an interesting one, class 1C antiarrhythmics, especially flecainide if given for atrial fibrillation. So fun fact, you may or may not know this, flecainide um, is, should be given with an AV nodal blocker. If you don't, you can precipitate atrial flutter with a one-to-one -one conduction that can look like VT. So if you are discharging someone on flecainide and they're not on, say, a calcium channel blocker or beta blocker, please kindly remind your attending or your senior, whoever it may be, that they should probably be in one. All right, you guys, so the RN, here we go. You got the ECG. So since we've been talking, you got your good history. Here we go. So you ready for this? Okay, so this is the money slide. If you don't get anything else out of this lecture, this is literally it. Um, when in doubt, in patients with wide complex tachycardia, VT is much more common than SVT with aberrancy. Why do I care? Inadvertently treating VT as SVT can precipitate death. Mistreating SVT is that where VT will do essentially nothing. Moral of the story, if there's any uncertainty, it's 2 a.m., it's a wide complex tachycardia, they're going really fast, presume VT if patient was wide complex tachycardia. This is a lecture though, so let's give it a good college try. If the patient becomes unstable, as you painstakingly try to go through Brigada criteria, assume unstable VT. Um, you're having the RN, of course, in the meantime, send blood work, the basics, all the things you know you need. I won't go over that. Um, while you're reviewing the current ECG and a prior ECG, what are you looking for in the prior ECG? Left bundle branch block, Q waves, pre excitation, QTC. All right, here it is. Scared yet? Let's keep going. The concordance. This is one of the things that right away will let you know what it is. The presence of concordance, meaning everything's going the same way, strongly suggests VT, greater than 90% specificity. Negative concordance in V1 through 6, and that means just a big monophasic QS complex, VT. Positive concordance in V1 through 6, meaning it's an entirely positive, tall, R, monophasic R wave, VT. Rarely can it be antidromic ABRT with a left posterior accessory pathway, but we're not going to go into that today. Um, so here's an example of positive concordance in V1 through V6, VT, you're done. And if you have questions along the way, please just put it into the chat. I have it live, so just do it when able. Um, VT versus aberrancy. So in a patient known with AFib, um, if they have a regular wide complex tachycardia, it's likely VT, um, aberrant conduction should be more irregular. Um, of course, this is not perfect, you guys. So I actually had a call about a patient the other night who has a history of AFib. Um, they were going kind of slow, and then they went fast. It looked like it was about 150. A heart rate of 150 ventricular rate is, there's a good chance it's atrial flutter, and this can happen sometimes too. Um, another exception, polymorphic VT, of course, would be irregular. If you have polymorphic VT, you best be thinking of ischemia. Um, there can be slight variation in the RR intervals in VT as opposed to most SVTs. Um, but once again, it's not a perfect system. And actually, sometimes you can get something called a warm up phenomenon with VT where it actually gets faster. Okay, so yeah, so we'll get into that question. If there is not concordance, how much less likely is a VT? So there's a lot of criteria, so we'll keep going. So does anyone know who this is? Should know based on the criteria that I can really meet you. Look at how much like thinner and happier and younger we look. So uh, don't go to fellowship, or if you do, just be aware that you may look a little bit older year later. So this is, um, yeah, this is Joseph Brugada. So he does a conference where every single ECG has 27 different accessory pathways. Um, we're not gonna do that today, but we are gonna go over his phenomenal criteria. Um, and there's various criteria, you guys. There's a lot out there. I trained with Brugada. There's a couple of, I mean, not, not personally, but the criteria. Um, there are other ones out there that you can also look into. I'll try to touch on most of them, um, and especially the ones that you'll remember. There's a lot of um, information here, and I know I only have so much time, so um, we'll at least go over this pretty thoroughly. So one of the most common in use is the proudest criteria because its sensitivity is 99% and specificity is 96%. 
um, in patients without a pre-existing bundle branch block. Now you'll see these numbers may vary, but this was in one of my most recent cardiovascular books, so I'm gonna keep it there. All right, so here is essentially what we're gonna go through. So absence of an RS complex, what does that mean? It's just concordance. So if you have the EKG we saw before, it's VT and you're done. So this is how the algorithm works. Like if you meet, if you say yes, it's VT, as you can see to the right. So essentially the arrows on the right-hand side should say yes over it, it's VT. And you can see the sensitivity and specificity um, with those findings. I think whoever asked that before, here you go, this should explain and answer your question, I think. Um, so they don't have concordance. And mind you guys, it's pretty rare that you're going to actually find that. So unfortunately, you're probably going to have to keep ticking along in the criteria. So RS complex in any precordial lead with RS interval greater than 100 milliseconds. Um, so what does that mean, right? It's the beginning of the QRS at the onset to the nadir or the nadir, however you like to say it, of the S wave should be greater than 100 milliseconds. So here's a blown up image of that. And yes, tired eyes in the middle of the night is that painful. But if it's wide, it's wide. It's there. Um, okay, so if you have that, you're done. Believe it or not, it's VT. AV dissociation, so more QRS complexes than P waves. You'll see P waves in between the QRS that doesn't march out. Um, that's a big one. AV dissociation, yep, you're done. It's VT. Fusion and capture beats, yep, you're done. Um, and I'll show you that in a little bit as well. And then morphologic criteria we're about to go over right now. There's a lot of them. I honestly, you guys didn't even put all of them in there because I want you to remember the ones um, that I think will stay with you and you'll remember. So um, otherwise you can of course look them up on your phone. You all have the ability to do so. And if you really have that much time to do it, your patient is probably pretty stable. So the access, this is a really quick and easy one. Um, pull out your Dubin, but here we are, a right superior axis, AKA an extreme axis, and there's 12 different names for this, strongly suggests BT. Lead one and AVF are negative, and AVR is positive. You're done, BT. Um, and then also compare it um, with the normal sinus rhythm axis. If there's an axis shift, um, you most likely have VT. And you can talk about the degrees, but do you have to remember 40 degrees in your head? No, just look at it. Does it flip axis? Okay, there you go. In a patient with a right bundle branch block like wide complex tachycardia, left axis deviation suggests VT. And the opposite is true. A left bundle branch block like wide complex tachycardia, right axis deviation suggests Morphology, so wider the QRS, we're talking like greater than 160 milliseconds, it's most likely VT. This rabbit ear one is fun, very important. RSR complexes with a taller left rabbit ear is more likely VT. I like to think if it's a right bundle branch block, it should be right and the right side is taller. I don't know if that helps, it's a lot of rights, but um, take it as you can. So this is an example of what? What did I just talk about? Um, and I'm giving you lots of hints here. Yes, specifically what kind of access? You can give it one of the 27 names and that's fine. Nice, extreme, I like that, that sounds good. Extreme, right, ooh, with caps, that's fantastic. Okay, so yes, you're done. Um, so this is an example of what? Another kind of, hey, you're done. It's really fun when you see, you can impress your attendings and everyone else you're gonna show it to. Close, one, two, three, got it. Capture, yes, yeah, so capture is gonna be narrow. Um, so basically, what is this? The SA node is still firing, right? VT, it doesn't care about the SA node. SA node doesn't care about VT. They go on their, their merry way. So basically what happens is the SA node transiently captures the ventricles in the midst of AV dissociation. So this is what you see. Looks like a normal QRS. All right, so those of you, let's, let's try it again. Look at the first beat after VT, what is that? Some of y'all had it right before. Yeah, 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 yeah. Perfect, perfect. And I love that you said fusion, then capture, capture, exactly what that is. So fusion is essentially a sinus beat starts and a ventricular beat coincides. And there you go, you get a nice hybrid complex of kind of intermediate morphology. It almost looks like a weird PVC, maybe not as wide. Okay, so here's some more criteria. This is where we kind of get in the weeds. So try to stay with me, because um, I have to be frank and say that I have a hard time remembering some of this as well. So a taller left rabbit ear, as we said before, 
PT. The QR complex in V1 and 2, as you can see, so you have a baby Q and a big R, more likely VT. Um, so this is your RSR, right? It's pretty exaggerated, but this is essentially what you would see um, in an SVT with a right bundle. So the second R is bigger. QS in V6, VT. There are some more. I did not add all of them. There's a couple more, but honestly, like I said, I, I think I just really want you guys to get certain things out of this so that you can kind of quickly differentiate and at least know where to look. That's all that really matters in, in today's day and age. So this is a new-ish one um, that I was not as familiar with, at least in residency. Varecki, I believe is how you say it, an algorithm. And it's essentially all off of uh, AVR. So Per their cohort, when they studied this for the algorithm, they said their accuracy was about 90%. I, I don't know, um, maybe it is. So what is it? So if you have a presence of an initial R wave um, in ABR, it's VT. It's just like the Brigada criteria. If you have any of these, it's VT. Presence of an initial R or Q wave greater than 40 milliseconds, it's VT. Presence of a notch on the descending limb of a negative onset and predominantly negative QRS, VT. Um, and then another one with a ratio we won't really go into too much. I hope I'm not losing you yet. So back to the scary EKG, so you're still on call. So um, you can either tell me the criteria you see that we've gone over um, or tell me just what you think it is and then we'll go through it piece by piece via Brigada. So what do you guys think this is? Is it VT or is it um, SVT with a Barrett speed? Anyone actually want to unmute themselves and kind of walk through it? Rune, do you want to tell us how you got there? Yeah, that's great. Please. You don't want to say that's okay, Joe. I understand. EKGs are very scary. Okay. All right. Nope. Oh, someone's talking. All right. So, um, I think so. We have a uh, white complex tachycardia here, um, um, and it's regular, uh, so it gets rid of some of the that can come with aberrancies. Um, so, and then um, looking at it, it looks pretty wide. Um, we don't have one to compare with, but it doesn't follow any like morphology of left bundle, right bundle. So it's most likely a VT. Other things are, I think the the uh, initiation of the Q to the nadir of S is also pretty prolonged. Um, and then the the other thing is like I think we can see some P waves, especially looking at the lead five. There are some P waves that we can see that they don't they're they're not matched with the QRS and also the last beat that was actual uh, is. In be a catch beat as well. Okay, so that's that's wonderful. I think the last thing you said is actually really what sells it. Um, so I see RSR prime, concordance, and catch beat. So yeah, so actually the concordance is a little tricky here. So um, just kidding. So here's V2, right? So you have an RS complex. So you do not have concordance. So we therefore have to keep moving. So the RS complex in this, so you have to look at specifically the complex that has an RS to determine the length. So in this one, it technically it's right there, but it's like at 100 milliseconds, a little less. Um, and yes, I think I hear with the, the P waves, but it's really hard to tell. And as this was read out, they did not read any AV dissociation, but boom, like you said, whether they're going into native or whether this is capture, I could say, hey, this is capture, but even if not, if they're going back into sinus, what has happened in V1? I know you see it. See it, see it? 
Texas. Yes, it's the complete opposite. So perfect. So that actually right there, um, beyond what she had already said, it's wide, very wide. It's regular. I mean, honestly, you guys, it's too fast to decipher anything else. Thank God for that beat at the end of whatever it's happening, whether it's capture or it's back to sinus. But this is certainly VT. So we're going to kind of pretend it's maybe polymorphic for a second. But either way, it's VT. So um, now what? So we're going to go through a couple more examples first. So let's go over this ECG, ET versus SVT. Don't lead me, give it away. Or the rhythm strip. Love me some rhythm strips. And this is, it's a slam dunk when you're able to catch this on an EKG, right? Because EKG is only so many seconds. So capture infusion, woohoo! So you win. I mean, you don't even really have to go through the other criteria. It's wide, very really wide, it's regular. And then right in the middle, um, the sinus node did you a very nice favor and the ventricle captured it. And there you are. So you're VT and you're done. Beautiful. Um, a couple other things just to kind of harp on the other signs because repetition is key with adult learning theory. So here we are. Um, Brugada sign, once again, is that RS to the nadir greater than 100 milliseconds, which is present. Um, um, and I believe <clears throat> we also have a pretty slurred notch, but we'll, we'll go away from that. I think that's in something else. Okay, so how about this ECG? VT or SVT with the barium C? So try, these are the kind of EKGs where you really have to just straight up go through the criteria. So I'll go through it with you and you just say yay or nay. Is there concordance in the precordial leads? Okay, um, so what's next? I'm going to say what's next in that algorithm whether it's present or not. And this, you don't even need blown up, you can just tell. So R to the S nadir, greater than 100 milliseconds, no. AV dissociation, I don't see it. I don't see capture, I don't see fusion. Um, I do not see P waves randomly. And then looking at some of the morphologies, I'm not seeing anything. And it's not super wide, you guys, either. Sometimes that can help you out. That's not a slam dunk by any, any means, um, but it's not super wide. So what is going on here? It's a typical left bundle, really no Brugada criteria. And then this is when you're going to astutely look at a prior ECG and you know, oh, they had a left bundle as well. This is just the guy who's agitated in the middle of the night because he's withdrawing um, and people think he has VT, but he just actually needs an Ativan. Okay. How about this guy? Um, we can maybe do old criteria, the new one that looks at just one lead. Okay. So Let's just keep going. So it's certainly wide. It looks regular. Does anybody want to give it a shot? I'm going to start it off for you. Well, the goal is to make ECG interpretation not scary and fun because it's so fun. You can learn so much by something that's so quick, easy, and inexpensive. So let's just keep going so we can kind of hit everything I want to go over. So this is like the Varecki algorithm. Is there an initial R wave in AVR? Yes, VT. So it's, it's very wide, it's very regular, um, and you can go based off of that lead. Um, you also have a couple more, just to give you some brownie points. So there's Josephson sign um, and Brugada sign. So both of those are present. 
so this is kind of interesting for my med peds folks out there and also let's say maybe they're 18 and if you're just internal medicine you'll see them as well any thoughts on this now this i can almost guarantee you might see it on um, medicine boards or certainly while you do mix up i know i had a question on there for this and i want you to basically tell me um what would their baseline ecg look like Going once, going twice. Okay. Okay, so Leslie, yes, I, I, I haven't met you, but absolutely. So WVW, you guys, pre-excitation. So this is classic on boards. You very well may see this in real life if you stay in internal medicine and deal with any other patients um, who may come in with acute issue. So this is actually something that you should know. So ABRT um, with WPW. Um, this is the one rhythm that may be impossible to distinguish from VT. Um, in this case, a big clue that I'm giving you is that prior algorithm of their age, they're only 10 years old. So less likely VT, of course, you have genetic issues, but what can you have? So basically you have ABRT, ABRT I'm sorry, that can go into a flutter with one-to-one -one conduction and actually can degenerate because they're in so fast into VF. Another fun fact, actually treating these patients with AV nodal blockade can increase conduction via the accessory pathway and lead into an increase in the heart rate with possible degeneration into VT or VF. So that's why when you get a question about these patients, and I know it's on Mixap, the actual treatment is procainamide. Um, so you're not going to use an AV nodal blocker. Now, are you gonna know this in the middle of the night? Probably not, but honestly, you guys, if you have a baseline ECG that does have pre-excitation, you're a hero. Um, you will know exactly what this is. So lock this in, keep it in your memory. You will see it again, I can almost promise, um, at some point in the future. So this is a fun one. I'm kind of just throwing in other things too that I think are board relevant and um, just kind of interesting in general. Does anybody know what this is? Hint, there might be a toxicity involved. Kind of tough. You said electrical alternates. I would not fault you. Hey, did Jackson? What's up? The Dally Swoopy? I like that. I don't know what that means, but I do enjoy that. So yeah, this is basically. Um, oh, you're talking about the SC segments. Okay. So this is actually bidirectional VT, and this can happen with digoxin toxicity. So that's a fun one. Keep that um, in your memory bank. So this does not look like the one on the first slide that I put up, and and I won't go all the way back to it. But I hope what you guys try to do when you see these telemetry strips, first couple of things. One, put up more waves if they got it, right? Give yourself more leads to look at. The more leads you see, the closer it is to an ECG, the better. Um, and also try to march out QRS complexes. Artifact, you'll be able to find something typically that maybe looks narrow and you can march out. But here, um, this is not artifact. This is in fact, anybody? I'll pick that up, thank you. Okay, so torsades, excellent. So I won't go into it, go, 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 go into too much depth here, but just some uh, major points. So torsades, it's initiated when a PVC occurs during the preceding T wave. So you get an R on T phenomenon. Um, torsades with heart rates greater than 220 beats per minute um, will most likely degenerate into VF. So that was the whole point of the first slide. If someone calls you and they say they've been in torsades for a few minutes, mag, 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 perfect. I don't care about the oh, thank you so much. Um, yes, so you're obviously going to start there. But I mean, if you um, have that prior ECG, you see QTC prolongation, and yes, you see this, then that's what you're going to be concerned about. Um, the onset is often preceded by a sequence of, if you can see it on telly, short, long, short RR intervals. 
so-called pause dependent torsades. If you see it, it's great. It's just something to kind of go into the weeds about torsades because I think it's an interesting rhythm. Um, torsades is often short-lived and self-terminating. So if they had it for a few seconds and they went out of it, great. That means you really have an opportunity to slam them, slam them with mag. Um, but if they are in it and it's sustained, they will have hemodynamic instability and collapse. Um, you're looking at someone who's definitely going into BF and you will be shocking them very, very, very quickly while you're giving magnesium. So treatment for the stable patients, so back to our VA patient at 2 a.m. Um, surprisingly, VT can be tolerated well in the short term if the heart rate's less than 150 beats per minute, which sometimes you may see. Heart rate 150 to 200, it'll be tolerated barely. Heart rate greater than 200, um, symptoms are in virtually all patients, and you're going to see them probably rapidly deteriorate. What do we do for stable VT? Reverse what can be, of course. The obvious is to all of your electrolytes, stop any offending agents. Now, of course, at that exact moment, you're not going to have an effect, but going forward to prevent recurrence, you definitely want to look at that, the meds we talked about before. Ischemia needs to be eliminated if it's polymorphic VT. I mean, if you have someone and it's refractory, I mean, either way, I know you're going to be calling one of the cardiology fellows, um, but we have to be thinking about activating the cath lab quickly. And that's why we put it in our note. There's a reason we say, we'll not take to the lab overnight unless there is refractory VT, because um, there is something that needs to be opened up immediately. Um, NSVT, beta blockers are great. You don't have to worry about it too, too much overnight, except reversing what you can and stopping things that may be the offending agent. If sustained, we love some amio drips, lidocaine drips are preferred for ischemia, but you're most likely gonna see amio being started first. Um, so that is a really, really good place to start. Not the um, ACLS algorithm amount, but you're talking a MIG per minute, and you'll be starting that patient and leaving it there for the rest of the night to kind of cool them off. So turn for the worse, unfortunately, your night keeps getting a little bit longer. After receiving a history of prior MI from your patient, his eyes start to roll into the back of his head. You check his carotid pulse immediately, which remains present. Repeat blood pressure and note that it has dropped from 110 over 70 to 88 over 60. What are you going to do next? Electricity. Oh, that's from fantastic, Max. Thank you. Um, good, good, good. So I like the shock, but I need you guys to tell me something a little more specific about that electricity. What kind of electricity? And I'm not talking the joules amount, which is also important. I'm talking something you're going to have to hit. Yes. Oh my gosh. So unstable Y complex tachycardia. Um, so basically we have evidence of hemodynamic compromise, hypotension, altered mental status, active chest pain or heart failure, but they're awake and they have a pulse. So you're going to hit the sync button. Hit the sync button. If you do not, you may put them into VF. Use 100 joules. You can go up if you need to. Um, and you do this regardless of the mechanism. So that's what I'm saying. If it's wide complex and they are decompensating, but they are alert enough, Sync. Try not to say shock in a code because that makes people think deep. Fit. Perfect. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm uh, blowing up a picture here because I kid you not, you guys in residency. I mean, for some reason, especially if you're on the medical floors, people do not know how to use this machine, even though it's labeled. People get scared in codes, and you need to know where your buttons are and what to push. So let me highlight it for you. There she is. You're gonna hit that sync button. So uh oh. After attempting synchronized cardioversion, the RN notes the patient is pulseless. I hope you're laughing remotely. So at the time, it sounded like a good idea, which it was. It was the right thing to do. But now what? Congratulations, the patient is now in cardiac arrest. Treat it, treat it, treat it, okay? The ACLS algorithm, you guys, how many medications are on that algorithm for VTVF? Seriously, how many are there? Two. There are two medicines, so do not be afraid when you get this rhythm. I think why complex tachycardia is so much better and not as scary, because let's be honest, you guys, PEA is going to be 20 million different things, even though I know there's, what, five H's and T's on the actual algorithm, but you know damn well there's a lot of things it could be due to, but in this case, there's probably something cardiac going on, and there's probably something you can reverse, and you can at least try to shock them out of it. So call a code and while you're doing that, you're literally turning the sync button off if it doesn't automatically do so on your machines, give an immediate 200 joule shock, go for it. Start CPR, then pull out your ACLS algorithm card. You know where it is. Once again, like I just said, you do not have a lot of medications you have to worry about. Epi, Amio, repeat, get somebody to be your recorder every two minutes. They're gonna be helping you and telling you when you need to check a pulse. 
All right, so what a night. After three rounds of CPR, you obtain Rosk. By that time, transport has arrived. They're life flighted to UC. They go to the cath, the cath lab and they have a proxily occlusion, and it gets fixed with just a single measly drug eluting stent. Um, we'll pretend it was polymorphic BT. They get admitted to the CVI. He's no longer your problem. Congrats. You literally just saved a life by going to the bedside, going through a few simple criteria, and acting quickly. Take home points here. Um, why complex tachycardia in patients greater than age 35? Most likely BT. If you don't know, when in doubt, treat it like BT. Treat like BT, as I said, because the risk of treating it as such is much less than the opposite, period. If stable, assess for reversible causes while spiking a bag of amniostat if it's sustained. Be sure to act quickly if synchronous cardioversion is indicated. You could get them out of it quickly. Young patients may have WPW, so be aware of age nodal blockade and look at a prior ECG if you can. Brigado is your friend. Attempt to use the criteria whenever you can. So the more you use it, the more you're going to be familiar, essentially, with the knife. Um, any questions? I know I got done a little bit early. There was a lot of material. Um, the goal is to hopefully keep you guys um, aware of why complex tachycardia is and make sure that you're a little more comfortable with it. Obviously, you'll be calling us as cards fellows, but um, it doesn't have to be as scary as it sounds. And I want you to embrace those WCTs. Questions at all? Okay, hold on, I got a couple here. Sure. Show the picture of the initial R wave again and just clarify what the bracket criteria is. When we use one of the ECGs example and do we've got a criteria step by step. Um, go back to another one. You try sync cardioversion. It doesn't work. What do you usually step up to? I mean, some people do 150, some do 200. I think if you're in that situation, just go for it. Go for 200. I'm new here, different, different things, but I've heard a lot of folks say that, and that's what I've personally done in the past. Um, so <clears throat> we go back to the Varecki, and then someone mentioned going over an ECG. Is there a specific one you guys want me to go back to? Uh, let's see. What do you guys want me to go to? This way. So let's. Um, so Varecki, this is the one we're talking about where an ABR, it's just, I guess I'm pointing, and obviously you can't see where I'm pointing. So just a big initial R. One could, you could argue, I guess, all day about a baby Q first, but um, I would argue, and then the diagnosis of this would say it's just a big initial R inflection. So let me go back to that criteria. And maybe we'll go over this one again through the criteria. Um, presence of an initial R wave, right? Because what does ABR look like on a normal ECG? Maybe that'll help clarify. If you guys want to answer on that. Is it positive? Is it negative mostly? You're just your normal looking ECG. Yes, yes, yes. Normal QRS, negative, negative, negative. Perfect, right? So that's the whole point of it. The axis flips. It's all actually, I think really what Varecki is saying is, is what we've already mentioned. Some of the criteria is a extreme axis deviation is AVR essentially becomes positive. So hopefully does that help? Um, and then how about just one of you guys want to try to go through Brugada um, in a different one? one you guys just shout it out or tell me which one you think you want to try to go through together lawyers okay so why doesn't somebody kind of turn on their mic and and let's go through this please pretty please i'm sick of talking
really just start with the super duper basics of saying it is a wide complex tachycardia and then going down the algorithm. I can also, I wish I could pull them up on the same slide, but I'll just say it verbally. So what is the first thing in the algorithm for a Brugada? Close. Okay, absence of an RS. So once again, yeah, what does that mean? To me, it's like, uh, I don't know, concordance. So is there concordance in the precordial leads, V1 through 6? So they all go in the same way, up or down? No, they are not, right? So and in case there's confusion, so V1 through V4 are, or V1 through V3, what are they, positive or negative? Positive. Good. How about four through six? Good. Perfect. So there you go. So you already said that out loud um, that you do not have concordance. I'm sorry, I'm getting paged about a VT. Just kidding. So that's your first. So you already you don't have VT. You have to keep going down. So now we have to go to the RS phenomenon. So you have to identify which lead has an RS complex, which lead has an RS complex in the precordial leads. V6, perfect. How long does it take from the start of the QRS, which is just essentially in this case RS, to the nadir of the S wave? I have bad eyes, but I can tell from here that it's greater than, Perfect. More than 2.5. So you're saying more than two and a half boxes. So that's how many milliseconds, you guys? So greater than 100. Perfect. So you're done there technically, but let's pretend that was not present and you can't find that. So what would you go to next in the algorithm? So AV dissociation, so you're going to look and see, do I have P's, which is honestly hard to see if you have a really fast rhythm, but sometimes they're not, and you can see them marching away on their own, right? So this is when you're going to get out calipers or poor man's calipers with a piece of paper and note card and try to march out the QRS complexes on the P waves and see if they're completely dissociated, as you would with like a complete heart block, it's just much faster. Um, yes, and then also with that goes along with the capture and fusion beats. So if you have any of those, you're done, it's VT. And then if you don't, What's next? This is where you really get into the weeds and we're looking at morphology of things. Um, so like I said, I didn't even show you all of them, but this is one of them. A QS in V6 would be VT. Um, you have the taller left rabbit ear in V1 and 2, that's VT. A QR complex in V1 and 2. V1 or 2, I shouldn't say and, that's VT. So those are some of the morphologic things. And then actually, let me go back to this slide because I think it's pretty good. So this is also in the morphology, like we talked about the superior axis, um, a right bundle with left axis deviation and the opposite. Um, really just wide QRS, which we kind of already went over. And then we talked about the tall rabbit here. Um, I think there's something else. I think we pretty much hit all of it. Um, and that's really the majority of what you're going to have to go through. So that is the algorithm you can try to go through when you have a wide complex tachycardia every single time. Is there concordance, RS nadir, AV dissociation, capture, fusion, and then strange, strange morphology. Um, and that's pretty much the gist of it. Um, but once again, when in doubt, assume it's VT. Any other questions? Right, you guys well thank you so much thank you for everything you do thanks for being on the front lines um please feel free to text me uh whenever yeah hopefully it was helpful thanks for the positive feedback um if you ever have questions or anything you at least know my email and if you have my cell continue to use my cell um but yeah thanks so much glad to be the last cardiology lecture <laughs> have a good one